Hi everyone, this is our first lesson. It's over number sets. Um, let's get started. So here is the NCTM's content standard for numbers and operations that's related to number sets. Um, I'll let you read over this on your own so you can pause the video and, and take a look at it if you would like. Um, but just want to highlight a couple of the parts that are directly related to what we're going to be talking about today, which are um, learning about whole numbers for young children as well as fractions, um, integers, and beyond as students um, pro progress to those higher grade levels. Alright, so let's take a look at the number sets that we're going to be working with in this course. Um, here I have a diagram of the number sets and how they are related or um, how they build upon each other. All right, so this is how all of the number sets fit together. All right, so you can see that um, in yellow here, we've got our natural numbers. That's kind of the most specific type of number. Uh, the most, um, it's the most... sort of selective type of number. So we've got natural numbers there being the, the smallest set. And the natural numbers are contained within the larger set whole numbers, which is contained within the larger set integers, which is contained within the larger set of rational numbers. Out here to the side, you've got your irrational numbers. Those are different than all of these. That's why they're, these little circles are not touching. But all of these number sets are contained within this huge set of real numbers. All right, so rational numbers, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, irrational numbers. They are all types of real numbers. All right, so we've got our most selective type, our, our smallest set, which is our natural numbers, contained within our whole numbers, which is contained within the integers, which is contained within the rationals. We've got the irrationals out here by themselves. But all of these are, are contained within this really big, huge set of real numbers. All right, so here are the, the um, symbols for the number sets that we're going to be working with in this class. All right, so natural numbers um, have this symbol here. It's an N with an extra line through it, so an extra vertical line through it. Whole numbers, kind of similar. So it's got this extra line on the left here. So it's a W with a little extra line on the left hand side of that W. Integers gets the letter Z. You may not have guessed that, but integers get the letter Z with the extra line in it. So that's the symbol for integers. Rational numbers get a Q. Q for quotient. Q for quotient. We're going to see why that makes sense in just a minute when we talk about each of the number sets individually. But the rational numbers have the symbol Q with the extra line in it, and Q here stands for the quotients. Irrational numbers, I've seen different symbols for irrational numbers. Um, in this class, I'm going to use the letter P with an extra line in it, um, but I have seen them represented uh, in different ways. And then the last uh, number set, the real numbers, that's the, the R with the extra line in it. All right, so make sure you get those written down. That should go on your formula sheet um, for our first quiz. All right, so let's talk about each of the number sets individually. All right, so the natural numbers, natural numbers, that's sometimes called our counting numbers. So natural numbers, here's our symbol. N with an extra line through it. That one didn't turn out so good. Let's erase that extra line and try it again. That looks exactly the same, so it didn't help at all. Um, but the natural numbers, sometimes called our counting numbers, these are going to be the numbers that you count with, right? So when we count things, we when we count objects, we typically start with one, two, three, four, five, and so on. All right, so this set, um, you know, can contain a huge number. It could you know, 10,522, that's a natural number. Um, things that it can't be, it can't be negative, it can't be zero, and it cannot have a fraction or a decimal part. So it can't be like one and a half or 2.3. All right, so these are going to be our counting numbers, numbers that we would use to count objects with. 
Right next we have our whole numbers. So if you're thinking about that diagram, remember natural numbers was the smallest circle, then natural numbers were contained within whole numbers. A whole number is a number that has no fractional or decimal part and it cannot be negative, so kind of similar to natural numbers, but it does include the number zero. All right, so includes zero. All right, so let's add that here. Includes zero. All right, so natural numbers, very similar to the whole numbers, except whole numbers include that number zero in the set. All right, so some examples of whole numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, all the way to, you know, positive infinity. All right, so can't be negative, can't have a fractional or a decimal part, um, but it can be positive. It includes zero and uh, it goes on to positive infinity. Next, we have the integers. I forgot to put the symbol on the last one, but um, integers is the letter Z with the extra line in it. All right, so the integers are going to be the whole numbers and their negative counterparts. So that's going to be like uh, 1 and negative 1, 2 and negative 2, 3 and negative 3. And don't forget, whole numbers also include 0. So you can see we've got 0 in here as well. Integers do not have a fractional or a decimal part. So you're not going to see anything like 3.5 or negative 2.03. All right, so they have no fractional or decimal part. Um, but they do include positive and negative whole numbers as well as zero. All right next we have rational numbers. Do y'all remember the symbol for rational numbers? It was Q for quotient. All right, so you can think of the rational numbers as the quotients. Some people will tell you to think of uh, in this word rational, you see the root word here is ratio. Ratio meaning a fraction. All right, so the formal definition of a rational number is that it is any number that can be written by dividing one integer by another. All right, so one integer divided by another integer. So let's think like um, 2, whoop, let me switch to my pen, 2 over 5. 2 is an integer, 5 is an integer. So 2 over 5 is a rational number. And this can include negatives. Remember, neg uh, integers can be positive or negative. So this could be negative 7 over 3. Right? Negative 7 is an integer. 3 is an integer. Right? So negative 7 over 3 is a rational number because it's an integer divided by an integer. Now, more plainly, so a less formal version of this definition is that it's any number that can be written as a fraction or a ratio. Um, and then let's just add in here that rational numbers can be positive, they can be negative, and they can even be zero. All right, so you might be wondering, how can I write zero as a fraction? Well, zero is one of the easiest ones to write as a fraction. It's just zero divided by anything. Zero divided by five. Zero divided by five is zero. Zero divided by negative 10, still zero. Right, you can't have zero in the denominator, but it's perfectly fine to have zero in the numerator. Right, so rational numbers, they can be positive, they can be negative, they can be zero. All right, so I'm going to erase this because I think I have some writing that I'm going to pop up here on the bottom in just a second. All right, so we've got some examples here of rational numbers. We've got one half. 1 is an integer, 2 is an integer, so 1 over 2 is a rational number. 0 0.25, that can be written as a fraction. 0 0.25 is 1 over 4. Over 4, 1 is an integer, 4 is an integer, so 1 over 4 is a rational number. Then we've got negative 7. Now, negative 7 might not immediately jump out at you as a rational number, but we can write negative 7 as a fraction. Um, you could write it as negative 7 divided by 1. Anything divided by 1 is just itself. So negative 7 divided by 1 is still negative 7. Um, but here we've got it written as an integer, negative 7, divided by an integer, 1. So it's a technically a rational number. 
4.12. All right, so 4.12. Uh, 4.12 is a rational number. It can be written as 4, and remember this is like the tenths and the hundredths, so that'd be like 412 over 1,000. Let me double check that before I make sure. Nope, that's not right. It's over 100. I knew that didn't seem right. 412 divided by 100 is 4.12. My bad. Um, so 412 over 100, you can verify that by plugging it in your calculator. That's going to simplify to 4.12. So we can write 4.12 as an integer divided by an integer. Therefore, it is a rational number. And then we've got 1 over 3 here. Um, if you look in your calculator real quick, plug in 1 divided by 3 and tell me what that simplifies to. Or what, what is that? How do we write that as a decimal? That would be 0 0.3333 forever, right? Do y'all remember how we express that whenever a, a decimal continues on forever and it repeats? Do y'all remember you put the little line over it? And you can really even write it as 0 0.33 with the line over it to make it even shorter. All right, so when you have that little line over it, that means it repeats, goes on forever. All right, so 0 0.3333333 forever and ever and ever. All right, so what that means, what we've seen here is that, let me switch to my laser pointer. If you have a terminating decimal, that's like 4.12, that's a decimal that ends, that terminates. So if you have a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal, that's going to be a rational number. Now that is definitely something that I would add to my um, formula sheet or add to my little, you know, maybe just keep a running list of like fast facts that I'm telling you that are, um, important, but I do want you to remember that terminating decimals and repeating decimals are types of rational numbers. All right, we're going to see in just a minute whenever you have decimals that are not terminating and not repeating, then that's a different type of number. All right, so rational numbers are little Q with the line through it, quotient, because it's written as a fraction. Quotient means to divide. All right, so let's look at our next number set. Next, we've got the irrational numbers. Irrational numbers, we were using the symbol uh, P with an extra line in it here. All right, so if rational numbers are numbers that can be written as an integer divided by an integer, or numbers that can be written as fractions, then irrational numbers are just the opposite. Irrational numbers are just the opposite. It's a number that cannot be written as a simple fraction because the decimal goes on forever without repeating. It right, goes on forever. That means it's non-terminating. Right, let's write that. Goes on forever. Goes on forever means non-terminating without repeating. That means non-repeating. All right, so these are very special numbers. Some examples of some irrational numbers, pi, e. I should probably talk about what pi is. If you haven't seen it in a while, you may not be familiar. Um, pi, if you're looking at your calculator, you might be able to see the pi button on your calculator. Pi is our special number. It comes from looking at the circumference of a circle or the area of a circle. And it is like 3.1415926540. And it is non-terminating. It goes on forever, dot, dot, dot. That's what we use to indicate that that goes on forever. And it's non-repeating. So you're not going to see this exact combination, 15149265540. You're not going to see that get repeated. All right, so it just goes on forever, and it's non-repeating. All right, so that's an irrational number. E is another one of our special numbers. Um, e is called the exponential function. So you may you may remember seeing this if you took algebra or if you took quantitative reasoning or math modeling. Um, so E is about so E is approximately 2.72. Let's see, let me pull it up my calculator. All right, 
and it continues on forever. Dot, dot, dot. All right, so we've got a non-terminating, goes on forever, non-repeating decimal. Um, and this number occurs naturally when we're looking at like the population of people, population of animals. Um, so it's related to um, growth and decay. Growth of populations, decay of populations. All right, so, so far we've seen these special numbers like pi and e. And then we've also, we see some other types of numbers here. These are gonna be radicals that cannot be simplified. So not simplified, not able to be simplified. So square root of two, that can't be simplified. Um, if you remember how radicals work, the way that you simplify a radical is you look at the radicand, that's the value that's underneath the radical, right? So that's the value that's underneath the radical. And you try to um, simplify that by saying, okay, two, does that have any perfect square factors? No, it does not. Three does not have any perfect square factors, so this cannot be simplified. Square root of 10, that has no perfect square factor, so that can't be simplified. So non-terminating, non-repeating decimals are examples of irrational numbers, as well as radicals that cannot be simplified. All right, and then one other type of number that I, I wanna be specific here and let you know is a irrational number. It's gonna be this, this uh, number where you see this kind of pattern occurring. So let's say like 4.01. 0, 0, 001 0, 0, 0, 001 0, 0, 0, 0, 001 so you see that pattern occurring but it's not repeating so it's not like 0, 01 0, 01 0, 01 0, 01 all right so you see a pattern but it's not repeating um then it still follows falls under this uh criteria here so even though it's non-terminating it continues on forever um even though it has a pattern it is still non-repeating all right, so I want you to, to remember that, that those weird decimal numbers that have a pattern in the decimal, those are irrational. All right, and then our last, our biggest set is the set of real numbers. The real numbers are all the numbers that can be found on the number line. They can be big, they can be small, they can be positive, they can be negative, they can be decimals, they can be fractions, they can be irrational numbers. So real numbers are just going to be any number. So here are some examples. Five, so a positive whole number. Negative 17, so an integer. Um, 0.312, a terminating decimal, so a rational number. Another rational number, one half. An irrational number like pi. An irrational number like square root of two. Those are all examples of real numbers. All right, so let's do an example. You're going to see questions just like this on the test so you do want to familiarize yourself with this type of question to make sure that you are comfortable with it it says identify the sets to which excuse me it identify the sets to which each of the following numbers belongs by marking an x in the appropriate boxes all right so we're just going to look at the number and then we're going to say okay well what type of number is that and then we're going to go over here and make an x under that box all right so negative square root of 17 negative square root of 17. All right, so this is a radical. All right, so we talked about radicals with um, irrationals. All right, so that's that's maybe where we're leaning towards, but let's think about it a little bit further. Can this radical be simplified? 17, does that have any, what two numbers multiply to 17? So what are two numbers that multiply to 17? It's only one in 17, right? 17 is prime. Um, so there's no perfect square factors of 17. So this cannot be simplified. So that means that it is an irrational number, but irrational numbers are part of the set of real numbers. So it's also a real number, right? So it's negative square root of 17 is an irrational number, but it's also a real number because um, irrational numbers are part of that larger set of real numbers. All right, next line we have negative two. So number two says negative two. All right, so it's negative. That means it's definitely not a natural number. It's definitely not a whole number. Is it an integer? Yes, it is. Yes. Is it a rational number? Could you write it as a fraction? Yeah, you could do negative two over one. Yeah, so it is a rational number. And integers and rational numbers, those are both part of the larger set of real numbers. So it's also a real number. 
All right, let's look at the next line, negative nine over 37. And you can choose to put the negative with the nine or with the 37, it really doesn't matter. Um, so if you don't like the negative being out there on the side, I know some people prefer to have it written like um, negative nine over 37 or nine over negative 37. Either way is fine. You just don't want to have the negative in the top and the bottom because it, then it would be a negative over a negative and it would cancel out. All right, so let's just think of it as negative nine over 37. Negative nine is an integer. 37 is an integer. So this is an integer divided by an integer. So that's a rational number. Rational numbers are part of the larger set of real numbers. So it's also a real number. All right, what about zero? What about zero? Is zero a natural number? No, it is not. What about a whole number? Is zero a whole number? Yes, it is. Zero is part of the whole numbers. The whole numbers are just the natural numbers as well as zero. Is zero an integer? Yes, it is. It could be written as zero over 10 or zero over negative five. Right, so it can be written as, uh, or excuse me, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Zero is an integer uh, because integers are the positive and negative whole numbers as well as zero. Now, zero is a rational number because it can be written as a fraction. Sorry about that. So it can be written as zero over five or zero over negative 10. So zero is a rational number. And then whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, they're all part of that larger set of real numbers. So you should be seeing a pattern here where um, almost all of the numbers we're gonna see here are real numbers. There's gonna be one little special example that's not a real number. Spoiler alert. All right, let's look at number five. Negative 6.06, .06. right? So that's definitely not a natural number, right? Definitely not a whole number. Whole numbers aren't allowed to be negative. It's not an integer because it's got a decimal part, um, but it is a rational number. Remember, rational numbers are gonna be those terminating or repeating decimals, right? So negative 6.06, .06, that's a terminating decimal. It ends um, at six. So it is a rational number and rational numbers are part of the real numbers. All right, what about 4.56? Is that a terminating decimal or is it a repeating decimal? Is it a non-terminating, non-repeating? What do you think? Oh, and it looks like there's supposed to be a little line over there. I might have, whenever I copied it over, it might have messed that up. So maybe this is supposed to say 4.56 with the line over it. Ooh. Sorry, I messed that up. All right, so we're going to put the line over the 5, 6. If yours doesn't have it, make sure you add it right now. Um, all right, so this is a repeating decimal, right? Repeating decimals are, they're not natural numbers. They're not whole numbers. They're not integers. None of those are supposed to have um, fractional or decimal parts. But it is a rational number. Remember, rational numbers are going to be your repeating decimals or your terminating decimals. And it's also a what? A real number. All right, number seven. Here we have 3.05005005 dot dot dot. So it's indicating that it's repeating. Or excuse me, not that it's repeating, that it goes on forever. All right, so here we have a non terminating because it doesn't end, non-repeating decimal. So if it's non-terminating, non-repeating, it is an irrational number. But irrational numbers are part of that larger set of real numbers. So it's irrational and it's real. All right, here we have 8, 9, 10, 11. 8, super easy, this is 18. Is it a natural number? Yes, it's one of our counting numbers. All right, so it is a natural number. Is it a whole number? Yes, it is. Is it an integer? Yes, absolutely. Is it a rational number? Could you write this as a fraction? Definitely, you could just do 18 over one. All right, so you could write this as 18 over one. You could think of lots of examples, ways you could write this as a fraction. You could do 36 over two. 
54 over 3. It's not irrational. Remember, that's kind of like the opposite of rational. So you're never going to see an example that's rational and irrational at the same time. So if it's rational, then it's definitely not irrational. But it is a real number. Right, so it is a real number. All right, negative 43 over 0. Are we allowed to divide by 0? No, we are not allowed to divide by 0. So this was kind of a trick question. This one is undefined. You could also say it does not exist. All right, so it is undefined. We're not allowed to divide by zero. Cannot divide by zero. All right, number 10, we've got pi. Well, that was one of our examples. That is an irrational number. It is a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. But the irrational numbers are part of the larger set of real numbers, so it's also real. All right, number 11, another kind of tricky one. We've got square root of 4 over 49. Well, 4 and 49 are perfect squares, so how could we simplify this? What would this reduce to? What's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of 49? 7. Yeah, so this ended up reducing to just a normal fraction. All right, so it's not a natural number. It's not a whole number. It's not an integer because those three sets aren't allowed to have fraction or decimal parts. But it is a rational number. It's an integer divided by an integer. So it is a rational number. Whoa. Apparently I planned ahead to write that. Sorry about that. And it is also a real number. All right, so since it reduces to a, a fraction, a, a, rational, a rational number, an integer over an integer, um, then it's a rational number and it is a real number. All right, finishing up this little table, we've got negative square root of 64. What does that simplify to? 64 is a perfect square. So that simplifies to negative 8. Negative 8. Negative 8, not a natural number, not a whole number. Those aren't allowed to be negative, but it is an integer. And it is a rational number. You could write it as negative 8 over 1 or negative 16 over 2. It's not irrational. Remember, those are kind of it's the opposite of rational. So if it's rational, then it's not irrational. And it's also real. All right, so next line, number 13, we've got square root of 13. Now, can this be simplified? What are the factors of 13? What are some things that multiply to give you 13? Just 1 and 13, right? So this can't be simplified. There's no perfect square factors. So since this cannot be simplified, um, this is going to be an irrational number. Remember, we said that irrational numbers, that's those non-terminating, non-repeating decimals, as well as radicals that cannot be simplified. But Irrational numbers are also part of that larger set of real numbers, so it's also a real number. All right, try line 14 on your own, so pause the video, fill that in, see if you get them all right. Give you a second to pause that. All right, negative 5. Negative 5. It's not natural. It's not a whole number. Those aren't allowed to be negative. It is an integer. It is rational, and it is real. All right, and then try again on number 15. Pause the video. Try it on your own. Make sure your answers match mine. Give you a second to pause the video. All right, so 2 over 3. 2 over 3. Not a natural number, not a whole number, not an integer. Those aren't allowed to have fractional or decimal parts. But it is rational. It's rational because it's an integer divided by an integer. Two, divided, two is an integer. Three is an integer. So it is rational. It's not irrational, but it is real. All right, cool. All right, and then last question on, the, on this set of notes. It says, for the measured quantity, determine the set of numbers that is most appropriate to describe it from the list on the right. Now, you, I'm sure that like, you could have various answers here. So... Um, just the, the wording of the question alone kind of lends itself to, to having, you know, 
more than one correct answer. So the, the phrasing there, most appropriate, tells me that there could be more than one correct answer, which is fine. All right, so it says we got population of a town, the temperature given in a forecast for the city of Chicago, the number of gallons of water used in each minute while taking a shower, and then the elevation of a mountain. All right, so population of a town. Could you have, um, could you have a population that was negative? That would be the integers, right? That would be like positive and negative whole numbers as well as zero. No, you couldn't have negative population. Natural numbers. Do you think natural numbers would be used to describe the population of a town? Yeah, right? I would think that sounds right to me, natural numbers. Um, think about when you're counting the population of a town, you would count with the counting numbers. I would also consider like whole numbers would be fine there. Like if you had a, a town that had zero people living in it. So I would consider whole numbers could also be correct there. All right, next uh, little B here, we've got the temperature given in a forecast for the city of Chicago. All right, so since it's saying given in a forecast, like think about on, when you watch the weather or when you look at the weather app on your phone, it's not giving you decimal numbers. You know, it's not saying, oh, it's going to be 82.35 degrees today. It's going to give you whole numbers, right? Or it's going to give you, a, yeah, a whole number. But could the temperature in Chicago dip into the negatives? Could it get really cold there? Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we're thinking positive and negative whole numbers. So that would be integers. It could also be zero degrees. So zero is appropriate there as well. All right, now this one, number of gallons of water used each minute while taking a shower. All right, number of gallons of water used each minute while taking a shower. This is probably not going to be like a, a perfectly whole number, right? It's, it's not probably not like I use exactly two gallons every minute while I'm taking a shower. Um, it's probably, you know, got some decimal numbers involved. It's probably like 1.33 gallons per minute, you know, something like that. All right, so definitely not integers, definitely not natural numbers. I would say rational numbers is more appropriate here. All right, so numbers that are allowed to have a decimal or fractional part. All right, and then elevation of a mountain. I thought a lot about this one, probably too much. It's really not that serious. But elevation of a mountain. So I did some Googling and I just looked up like elevation of Mount Everest or elevation of Denali. Whenever they report the, the elevation of a mountain, it's always in a positive whole number. All right. So they're not saying, you know, that it's 1,000. 0.35 feet. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. So the elevation of a mountain, in my opinion, I would go with the natural numbers. All right. So I would go with the natural numbers. Um, I'm not going with integers here because a, the negative elevation of a mountain doesn't make sense. Negative elevation makes sense, you know, if you're below sea level, but we're talking about a mountain here. So allegedly, you know, we would expect that this is above sea level. So it would be positive uh, just by the very definition of what a mountain is. Um, so I think that the natural numbers is most appropriate there. But if you have um, other ideas, then, you know, I would be open to, to other answers there if you could give me a reasoning behind your answer. Okay, so that is everything for our first lesson. I hope you uh, feel good. I hope you feel like you learned something. If you do have any questions, then please send me an email uh, or post in the, in the little discussion board uh, on D2L. But I will see you guys in the next video, and I hope you have a great day.